unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. Again, it's good to see all of you. If there's any first time visitors, if you would like to please stand and give us a little bit about yourselves, you can do so at this time. All right, one big happy family. Again, we thank God for all of you. Um, we're going to go to the Songs of Zion. We ask that our praise team will come up and give us some, some good old singing. Praise and worship to Amen. Thank you. 
through, no matter what we're going through, we can follow Jesus. And when we look back, we don't have to turn back. The cross is before us. Man is behind us. And all we got to do is just thank God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus who died on the cross that we can be set free on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to turn back, people. We don't have to turn back to the wicked ways. It's a new day. It's a new thing. We're living holy in Jesus. 2015 is all because of holy living. That's what we want to do today. We want to thank God for holiness. He sacrificed his son Jesus for you, for me. When people see you walking down the street, they're going to think one thing about you. Oh, you changed. You right, I did. I changed for the glory of God. I only worship the one and all time God. The true and living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you now, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Mm. <laughs> Again, I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see all of you here. One thing about it, there's nothing you can do about it. I love you all, and I thank God for all of you. Mm. I'm full of this joint, people. Mm. I just can't thank God enough for what he's done for me. I go back and I look over my life, and I realize that he has done so many great things for me. Things that I didn't even see happen. Things that I didn't even know was going to happen. But he blessed me. Amen. He's kept me. It's a good thing to be kept by God. Amen. That's right. That's right. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. We're going to get ready for our gift and giving. Prepare your hearts and your mind. Thank you, Lord.
starts here. We have to build this foundation first. We thank you for all the announcements. Again, this Wednesday, it is Bible study. You know we have assigned um, um, Bible chapters or chapters or what have you. It's going to be right here in the, in the, in the sanctuary on um, Wednesday night. So you're all welcome to come. Don't feel like you if you don't have a word. Because everybody's got a word. Everybody's got a testimony. So somehow, some way, whatever we're teaching, it's going to affect you. Somehow, some way, you're going to have some input. So don't be afraid that you're thinking that what you're going to say might be off track. No, no, no. We don't, we're not here to judge anybody. Amen. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to fellowship. We're here to just give God everything that is due to him. So we invite everybody to come out on Wednesday night for the single setup slash Bible study slash worship of God slash giving. Just giving, giving, giving. Just being happy and just doing all things before the throne of God. So um, again, govern yourself to all the... the um, the announcements that were made. So now we're going to move forward. We're going to go with our corporate prayer. Please stand to your feet. This is the time that, again, prayer is always a good time to just reflect and, and give God all that is due to Him. But we know that we have families back in the States that are going through. We know that we have people all over the world that are going through. And you just have to remind ourselves that it could be us. But thank God that we know who he is and what he's doing in our lives. That we can be changed and somehow affect those that are around us to want to change for the better. Clear your mind. Just think about God. All that he's done and all that he's doing and all that he's been to you. Oh, oh my God, he is just so awesome. The songwriter states that my God is awesome. He's my God, he's your God, he's our God. He is so big, he can be everywhere at the same time. When you think that he's not listening to you because he's got too many other people. want to stand in the gap for someone who's not here, praying for them, asking God to, to deliver and save them, to heal their bodies and their mind. Let's come to the holy grace in prayer. If you feel like you want to come to the altar, it is open for you. Kneel down before God. Just have, let him have his way. Heavenly Father, to your name. 
venga.
anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. You ought to allow those words, those lyrics, Lord God, to, to transpire right now in this room. Lord, we want to order our steps in your word. Lord, we want to feel your presence. Lord, we want to feel your anointing. Oh, Lord, we want an outpouring of your spirit. I don't know about you, but I'm going into a new year. Not wanting to do things the way I've done it. Knowing that I've done things my way for so long. I've had my own road map. I've had my own dictionary. I've had my own glossary. I, I had all these things to lead me, guide me, direct me. But now, oh Lord, I want you to order my steps. Lead me, guide me, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. I pray that someone on this morning is desiring the Lord to order your steps. You know, so many times we, we come to service. We don't come for the spirit of expectancy. We come with the blahs. We come with hard hearts.
This morning we do have uh, children's church for the toddlers today. Uh, we're not sure about other ages. Or we have the other ages too. So we have children's church this morning. Somebody clap your hands for children's church. I'm a child of God. Can I go? <laughs> Ma'am? Toddlers and elementary school, we have children's church. If you would like to attend children's church, please usher yourselves to this door at this time. Let me get some marching music for the children. There we go. Specifically, 
with the fourth chapter and the 23rd and 24th verse, but I must give you an opening and express something about this book of Ephesians before we get to those verses. Amen? See, the book of Ephesians was addressed to a group of people, a group of believers who were rich beyond measure in Jesus Christ, yet living as beggars. And only because they were ignorant of their wealth. See, sometimes we as believers don't know that we can go to the bank of Christ and draw what we need. See, I might not can go to NCNB. No, you cannot borrow. But I can go to the bank of Christ and draw all that I need. But it's up to me to be in a position to be able to draw from Christ. Are you with me? Now Paul begins by describing in chapters 1 through 3 the contents of the heavenly bank account. In that bank account they had adoption, acceptance, redemption, forgiveness, wisdom, inheritance and the seal of the Holy Spirit but that's not all he said they have life grace citizenship in short he was saying in the bank of Christ there's every spiritual blessing y'all don't have to clap your hands it's alright <laughs> see the Christian learns a spiritual walk is rooted in his spiritual will. See, some of us this morning are spiritually bankrupt. Lord help me, amen. And the thing about it is that a lot of people don't realize that they're in a state of foreclosure when it comes to Christ. Now, I don't want to be caught in that position where my spiritual bank account is overdrawn. Somebody said they have overdraft protection. Well, that's overdrawn too. They have a savings account in Christ. Well, that's overdrawn too. When you find yourself in that position, that's when you should say, now is the time. Our title this morning will be, now is the time. Let us look at chapter 4. Verses 23 and 24. These scripture is preceded by other verses of scripture that open up even this statement, but I've given you an opening. And the verse reads, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness true holiness now I'm not going to explore this morning that if the statement says true holiness, then there could be something that is, oh, 
going to mess with that. But it is something for you to research yourself. Because see, when you're spiritually bankrupt, you think you're operating in true holiness. But you're bankrupt. So you can't be. We, the saints of God, realize that God was too wise to make a mistake. And he knew that some of us have these types of minds that everything in our mind is governed by time. See, God, and I've taught this before, God is not subject to time. He created time. But he created it for us. And then we, with the wisdom of God, saw fit to make adjustments, adjustments to this thing. And in this day and time, we're still making adjustments. See, there was a time up until a certain point that we used something called sidereal time. This time was associated with the stars. Then we advanced and came to solar mean time which is associated with the sun. Even in those forms of understanding time, even now we have to make adjustments to the time. Some back in the States call it daylight saving time. I like that word saving time. But there was a four point Minutes, four minutes and 56 seconds, that is, difference in the sidereal time and the solar time. But man felt that solar time was more effective or efficient. So that is what we use. But here in the scripture, had come to a time where they realized that something had to change and it had to change in them. That is a good place to be. See, sometimes when we're going through and things are happening in our lives, we are so caught up with ourselves that we forget to realize that sometimes, if need be, you'll be in a period of heaviness for a time. According to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, the scripture reads, Therefore, if, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things become anew. So he enters into a time that things become new. Hmm. We've learned that you don't want to go back in time. See, some folk love to say that thing, if I knew, you know, how that thing go? If I knew then, what I know now, I wouldn't be where I'm in now. Well, see, now is the time that you leave the past in the past and start working on your future by dealing with things in the present. Hello, somebody. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody call me. If I could reach but one, Lord, I thank you for the one. But dealing with time and knowing that now is the time. See, the scripture declares that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. See, now we've got to be dealing with the here and the now. I speak so many times about people saying, well, we used to do things this way when so-and-so was here. 
They speak about past preachers, past chaplains. They talk about past presidents, past everybody. You got folks still walking around mad with George Washington. That man been dead and gone me. We're trying to figure out that he really chopped down the cherry tree. Let's concentrate on the here and the now. See, here and now, we need to deal with our souls being saved. See, we're at a time that we need to realize that the move of God is in existence today. That the Holy Spirit is relevant and available to your life today. Now is the time to put those thoughts of negativity behind you. Now is the time to take hold of your future. Now is the time to make decisions that are going to prosper you and not hinder you. Now is the time to listen to your mother when she speaks to you in a certain tone. Now is the time to know that she brought you in this world and she'll take you out. Now is the time. Now is the time that we should put away lying. Now is the time that we should speak the truth in love. Now is the time that you should speak to your neighbor and not walk past them without saying something. Now is the time to not get caught up on what somebody else didn't say, but get caught up on what you should say. Now is the time. Now is the time that we should be able to get angry, but sin not. You say, what are you saying, preacher? It's okay to get mad, but you ain't got to cuss them out. I talk so much about the CCs. Folks say, what is the CC? Somebody, y'all know what it is. What's the CC? A cussing. A cussing Christian. Now is the time that we come out of that. See, I, I talk so much about it can't come out unless it's in it now. Let's start working on getting it out. I don't mean cuss. I mean cuss. <laughs> it don't mean y'all just stand up and start cussing. That's just our own. What I'm saying is get that mess out of you. More Holy Spirit in, more word out. Let's get rid of it. Guy once asked me, he said, well, Pastor, he said, uh, Man, you know, I, I, I don't stop doing this and stop doing that. He said, well, you know what, I mean, man, I, when I'm going to stop doing this? When, when I'm going to stop doing Because I slapped my finger in the door and I said everything but what a child of God would say. I said, listen, brother, I want you to understand this, that we've got to grow. But you grow with grace. Now, you too can be delivered. But I want you to understand that you've got to start putting things in you that are going to be conducive to your growth to not speaking in that manner. But as long as you're listening to that which you're listening to, if you're finding your time listening to Nelly, to, to Pop, to Pat, whatever, 50 Cent. Now, I, I, I'm not against musicians. I am not. What I'm against is the lyrical finesse. Because there are some preachers that will tell you that it's all right to admire the artistry of the individual. Because, you know, you know I, I'm not really caught up on his lyrics, you know what I'm saying? I just like the beat. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And I want you to know it. The lyrics is what makes it. See, there's no white music, no black music. Folks say you listen to that white music. No. Music has no colors, only sounds. See? And some people can't 